All right, you guys saw the unveiling of this Zeta Technologies Ultra Z Blaze. So now I thought I would go over some of the assembly because I'm not going to do the assembly on camera. So I made some notes here because um, although the build is straightforward, it does have some uh, different kinds of components that I haven't used before. All right, so the control rod, it's a pretty large diameter, pretty stiff control rod. It is 2.5 millimeter in diameter, so uh, there's some information for you. So you're going to know ahead of time if you've got um, control arms on your servos with holes large enough to accommodate that. I'm going to have to drill mine out. It doesn't have recommended control surface movements in the manual, but what it does have at least is recommended linkage setup. So the servos that I took out of the F86 Sabre Jet, and they fit nice and snug and perfectly in the wings, and the bottom is completely flush with the bottom of the wing, so that is great. But they show a five-hole control arm uh, in their diagram. And what they say to do is to put it in the second innermost hole on the servo arm. Well, mine are pretty short for 9 gram servos, and they only have four holes. So what I am going to do is I'm going to drill out the um, second outermost hole on mine. That's where I'm going to put mine, and if I need to soften it up, um, I can do that with dual rate. But I want to make sure, I like mine set up fairly aggressive, so I want to make sure that I have plenty of control surface movement. So that's where I'm going to set mine up. And let's see, the control horns, they're pretty thick. They, they seem to be pretty good quality. So you're going to be able to use the control horns that comes in the kit. Their recommended control linkage setup on the control horn is the outermost hole. And that is the only one that is large enough to accommodate the uh, the clevis and the clevis I measured the clevis pin it's one millimeter diameter so you need at least 1.2 millimeter diameter hole in that control horn and I am definitely going to be connecting it to the outermost hole on the control horn I don't think getting enough uh, movement on these control surfaces is going to be a problem because these are fairly large control surfaces and they go about 80% 80, 80 of the length of the, of the wing. So I think it's going to have plenty. All right, so let's see. Uh, there's no clevis locks with, with the plastic clevises. So what I normally do is I just take a piece of heat shrink that fits nice and snug on there. And so I just cut a little ring of heat shrink out and I slide it over as a keeper for the control clevis. So that's what I'm going to do on that. The, the retaining ring on the back, if you have a, uh, if you want to put a pusher motor and prop on it, and it comes with a little X mount, and I measure the holes, and it looks like uh, it will accommodate an M3 screw, and the screw pattern can be spaced as far as 16 millimeter to 24 millimeter, so. Uh, a fairly wide variety of motors if you want to put on there. It comes, it comes with some M3 screws that you can use for your motor mount. It comes with four of those. It comes with um, four coarse thread screws to attach this, uh, attach this motor mount to the plastic ring. Now, when it came, the, plast the, the cross mount was already attached to the plastic ring and it fits in there pretty tight. So it takes a little bit of force to push that out, and it feels like it's feels like it's aluminum, and it's pretty thick. It's three, a little bit over three millimeters in thickness. So um, that's a really good quality cross mount that they sent with it. It comes with these little tiny plastic skids that attach to specific areas. There's one that attaches to each wing tip. There's two of them that attaches underneath the nose. Um, I think there's two of them that attach underneath the fuselage. I think there's uh, 
five of them all together that you will that you can glue in there. Uh, this is something I haven't seen before. It's one of the reasons I wanted to go over uh, some of the assembly tips on this. It has pins, it has sockets and pins. And there's a socket and pin that attaches underneath the uh, canopy cover. There's sockets and pins that attach to the back of the canopy uh, compartment. There are pins and sockets that attach to the, the area where the, the top of the uh, EDF duct attaches to it. And so I guess that the, the pins and the sockets, I mean, they, they, attack, they, they secure the front of the fuselage, they secure the back panel. Um, I don't know if I would trust them to secure the top of the of the uh, of the top of the duct, you know, because that helps hold in the EDF units. So what I'm probably going to do is take a little bit of glue and tack, you know, tack the the foam where it meets the the top of the fuselage with glue and in between the pins, so that if I ever need to get it off again, I can just take an exacto blade and cut through the glue. But I don't know if I would just trust those plastic pins and sockets to hold that unit on. Now, the vertical stabilizers, they just, you just glue them to the top of the housing. Everything fits nice, nice and snug together. There's no issues with that. I've got my EDF unit in here right now with a 40 amp speed controller. But I wanted to give you the diameter off of it because this 64 millimeter EDF unit that I pulled out of the um, I pulled out of the F-86 Sabrejet. It's perfectly in this housing. So I think what I am going to do, I talked about tacking that down with glue, you know, in between the pins and the front and the back. So I think what I'm going to do with the EDF unit is just put a little bit of glue in this um, grooved out area where the EDF unit sets at the bottom of the fuselage. I'm going to glue that in. I'm not going to glue it on the top. And that way, if I ever need to get to the CDF unit, all I have to do is cut through the glue, pop the pins loose, take a little acetone to loosen up the glue on the EDF unit, and I've got it out, right? So I think that's the way that I'm, I'm going to do it. So let me give you the diameter of this EDF unit because it fits perfectly in here. So you'll know that if you have a 64 millimeter EDF unit or if you're going to get one for this for this aircraft, you'll know what you're going to need. Okay, so that's 67 millimeters. 67 millimeters on the main part of the housing and the top housing. Let's make sure we get the largest diameter here. And the top of the housing is 72 millimeters. So and it fits in there perfectly, nice and snug. No issues with that. That's one of the things that I was kind of worried about was how how this unit was going to fit in here. If it was going to be too big, if it was going to be too small, if I was going to have to modify it, I'm not going to have to do anything. Okay, so the clear canopy, look, apparently it just it doesn't have any keepers, so it is just going to glue on top of that fuselage. And you do have the two little foam pilot figures that you can glue in here. I will probably put mine in. The main fuselage has a locking tab in the back and it has one of those pins and sockets that go in the front to hold it on. And I'm just slowly going to pull this apart so you can see how it goes together. Same thing here. You've got two sets of pins and sockets that are going to hold this panel on. I'm not going to glue that. I'm going to, I'm going to just secure that with the pins and sockets. That makes it really easy to be able to get in here and get to the ESC, um, get to the ESC connections for the motors, the, the receiver and everything, if you ever need to get into it. So I, I like the way that they, put the, that they put this assembly together. I think they put a lot of thought process into it when they were designing this. So, and then on the bottom, you've got two sets. 
of the sockets. You put the sockets on the bottom part of the fuselage and for the top mating surfaces that's where the sockets, the, the, the pins go. The sockets on the bottom, the pins on the top. Okay, so, and then the wings. I did check that I wanted to put the I wanted to put the main carbon spar through it and make sure that I had room to bring the servo lean in. There's a pretty big slot where you bring the carbon spar through to attach the wings, and there is plenty of room there to bring your servo connectors in through the bottom of it. So let me go ahead and pull this off. There, it comes right out. Your carbon spar just fits right through the center of the fuselage. I just dry fitted one of my servos. It fits in there nice and snug. And the bottom of the servo is flush with the bottom of the wing. So that's going to work out just fine. There is a, uh, you might want to check your EDF unit. Um, this one has a locking tab on the bottom. Of course, it's in this fuselage, the locking tab on the bottom is not going to touch anything, right? So, on the top, there's a, there's a small slot in there that will, will hold this in place. So, you, you've got to have tabs on the side or tabs on the top and the bottom, one of the two, to keep the EDF unit from rotating. So, so make sure that whatever EDF unit you're using, make sure that you have your tab aligned before you put the top of your, your housing on it. And um, what I would do is just ink it up and then put your fuselage, your, your housing on the top of it and then pull it back off and then you'll see a mark of exactly where you need to hollow out a little tab uh, inside the housing so that that slot fits nice and snug in there so that there's no chance if the glue breaks loose, there's no chance that the EDF unit is going to rotate on you. Okay, so um, with all of these jet type airframes, the weakest part of the fuselage is always the area underneath the canopy because that's where the least amount of foam is. So what I'm going to do, make sure my EDF unit doesn't come out, what I'm going to do is I am going to put a two millimeter groove in the bottom of the fuselage, you know, inside the canopy, and put a two millimeter solid carbon spar from just back of where this lurks comes out from the fuselage, where it's got a lot more foam, and run it all the way to the nose to reinforce that. So my suggestion would be to put a carbon spar in there to add some uh, some support for this part of the fuselage because that's going to be the weak point. So when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and, and glue in my sockets and my pins and everything that I need to glue them in because those secure a lot of the components on the airframe. So you want to make sure that that's one of the first things you do is install your sockets and your pins, those plastic sockets and pins, and let, the cure, let it completely cure with the glue before you start assembling the rest of the fuselage because those are what's, what's going to hold those parts together. And then you can complete the assembly of the rest of it. But that would be my suggestion. I've never, I've never seen these before. I've never used these in a kit before. So that's kind of interesting. And um, it's, going to, it's going to make it easy, you know, for the assembly. I like that. And for the, for the housing cover, it's going to hold everything in place where I've tacked it with glue as well. So, anyway, that's the kit. Uh, the assembly, like I said, is, is extremely simple. That carbon spar is a six millimeter diameter solid carbon spar. I don't think they were leaving anything to chance there. But uh, the, the hinges are foam. Make sure that you work these back and forth so that there's not much resistance on them before you attach your wings and your control linkage with your servos. I always do that to make sure that the servos aren't working any harder than they have to. The back of the, the ring that covers up the housing here, it glues into place right over top of it. 
and then your ring, ring, your plastic ring attaches to the back, and of course it's going to be glued in. So the back part of this is going to be glued in. The ring is going to be glued over the top of the of the entire housing back there, where the two top and bottom main surfaces meet. It's just it's a piece of cake, you know. I think they I think they thought it out really really well, and uh, I hope that this flies as well as it looks. I had someone make that comment and I, I agree, I hope it flies as well as it looks because it is a pretty cool looking airframe. And I think that uh, I, even if you had to buy the components for this kit, I, I, I think for what you get, I think that the build is going to be fairly inexpensive. So I've got a 40 amp ESC in it, six channel receiver, you only need a four channel receiver. The EDF unit that came out of the uh, F-86 Sabre Jet, the two 9-gram servos that came out of the F-86 Sabre Jet. So that's going to save me uh, quite a few dollars on the build. The only thing that I had to put in it that I didn't have was a 40 amp ESC so I could use full 4S power on it. But other than that, man, it's, uh, it's going to be a nice looking plane. I will get it together as soon as I can and get it in the air, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the air.